until relatively recently in patients who had um, relapse of their Cushing's disease, uh, there were some drugs that were aimed at decreasing cortisol production by the adrenal gland by decreasing production of cortisol at the adrenal level, but the problem is not really there originally. The problem is in the pituitary tumor. So in the last few years, there are some drugs which are um, efficient in trying to decrease the production of ACTH from the pituitary tumor itself. And a certain number of those have been uh, tried in clinical trials. And one of those is called passeriotide. Passeriotide is a somatostatin analog. And within those uh, corticotroph tumors of the pituitary, there are a cer certain number of receptors, including somatostatin receptors, and particularly somatostatin-5 receptor. And passeriotide is an analog of somatostatin, which has a particularly high affinity for somatostatin-5 receptors and also for other, uh, four of the other uh, receptors for somatostatin. There was a first uh, phase three study that was published a few years ago that was using passeriotide utilized as a twice daily subcutaneous form of injection of uh, passeriotide. And it had shown that either with 600 microgram or 900 microgram subcutaneously twice daily, that uh, about 25 to 30 percent of the patients could achieve normalization of the levels of cortisol in their urine. So it can be efficient for patients with Cushing's disease, and it has been approved as a treatment now, which is available to treat patients with uh, Cushing's disease. Passeriotide subcutaneously twice daily can be efficient, but it's relatively difficult for the patients to inject passeriotide twice daily. And since this compound can be prepared as a long-acting form, uh, and it is possible to inject passeriotide uh, long-acting forms uh, intramuscularly every uh, month, every 28 days. Uh, it was shown that this formulation is efficient to decrease growth hormone uh, excess in patients with acromegaly. So it was interesting to try to see if the injections of passeriotide and the long-acting form was efficient and to compare it with the results that were achieved previously with the twice daily subcutaneous dose. So at this meeting, for the first time, we are presenting the initial uh, results of this uh, study where 150 patients were randomized either to a 10 milligram or a 30 milligram uh, monthly uh, injection. And the first analysis is uh, for the results after six months of initiating therapy. Clearly, this is just the preliminary phase because soon we're going to have the results after 12 months of therapy, but already it was pertinent to report the results after six months. And the results are quite interesting. You will recall that with the uh, twice daily subcutaneous form, uh, between 20-25% of patients achieved the goal. In this study, the uh, positive response rate of normalizing urinary free cortisol was achieved in 40% of the patients, either with the 10 or the 30 milligram monthly intramuscular dose. The uh, particular uh, reason maybe why the results are somewhat better than the previous study is the fact that the inclusion criteria in the study were on average patients who had less uh, severe form of cortisol excess because in the first study, patients to be included in the study should have at least 1.5 times the upper limit of normal for urinary cortisol, but there was not, no upper limit of normal. So patients on average had urinary free cortisol, which were about five to six times higher than normal. In this study, the average uh, elevation of urinary free cortisol uh, was about 2.8 to 2.9 times the upper limit of normal because we included only patients who had levels between 1.5 and five times the upper limit of normal. So this is quite encouraging that after six months, 40% of the patients have normalized their urinary free cortisol. In terms of uh, side effects, 
somatostatin analogs can have a certain number of side effects which are well known, like GI discomfort, etc. But very similarly to the twice daily subcutaneous dose of pasareotide, one of the most frequent side effects is elevation of blood sugar. And we found that in terms of percentage of side effects, the uh, once monthly intramuscular uh, long acting form of pasareotide did not have either worse or less side effects than the subcutaneous dose. It's the same compound, except that it's injected and in a more convenient way of once monthly injection compared to twice daily subcutaneous injection. So the prevalence of uh, hyperglycemia, GI side effects, uh, biliary tract uh, abnormalities, etc., are similar to the uh, subcutaneous form, but once again, clearly, uh, longer term data is going to be available soon. So the 12 months data is going to be available very soon. And this should be published at the time that we have those results. But patients who uh, succeed to have good uh, improvement and control of their disease will be able to continue beyond the 12 month uh, therapy for longer term uh, continuation of the uh, LAR form in those patients. So it's quite encouraging because a few years ago we had very few options for the patients and now there's interesting new options uh, which can be offered for the patients and as usual we need to look at the longer term effects to see if this is sustained.